Marilyn, why don't you get to your feet as we join in our first hymn this morning, The Mighty Fortress. south. 
All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Amen. <coughs> We're going to head to prayer at this time. Uh, I think uh, some of you know Barb Gaskins um, from the school district. She drives a bus in the, she drove a bus in the Somerset area, and uh, she worked at the bus garage. Barb uh, found out recently that she had brain cancer, and she went in this week for surgery, and it was successful. They feel they got everything, and uh, I want to continue to lift Barb up in prayer. Is there uh, anybody you want to make mention of this morning? Amy? Um, a good friend of mine, Krista Molina, she's going to be in Virginia tomorrow, and she's got a really positive pregnancy, so I'm going to pray for her to pray for the Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Virginia? Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. If you're gathered with family around you and you've been stuck in the same house with them for months now, you can join hands in prayer with them today. Let's uh, lift our hearts up to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love to us. We thank you for loving us 
especially when we are not so loving or caring or kind to those around us. It's a sign that we are undeserving of your love. We, we don't deserve your love in our lives. We thank you for your forgiveness giving your mercy or we are unmerciful. Thank you for sending your one and only son into a world who didn't recognize him, wasn't looking for him, didn't believe in him. We thank you for getting through our thick dog and forgiveness and that love. Thank you for speaking to our hearts and drawing us close to you. And Lord, we come here today because we believe. We believe that you hear us and that you listen. And Lord, take our many requests into your hands. to you today. Lift Krista Salinas to you. Janet Dean Royer. Wayne Forsyth. April Barrett. Be with Kay's daughter Katie. Be with Kevin Seymour's dad today, dear Lord. Lift, we lift Lisa Gibson to you. pray for our country right now. Pray that your love might mend the places where things are broken. Your love might bring people back together. Pray for peace in our country and peace in our world. We thank you, dear Lord, for all you do for us come together as your people on this morning. We come together as those who want to walk with you and talk with you. Your own disciples came to you and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. In 2020, we still remember those words. We join our voices together this morning as we remember our Lord's prayer. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Wave at somebody and say, God loves you. I love you. Well, thank you for being faithful here at the offering time uh, when we started this thing. So back in March, I was worried right away that things would be tight and it would hurt. And it hasn't been that way at all. You all have been wonderful. Uh, the support at the Community dinners has just been great. Uh, the offering has been good. You all have been sending your offerings in. Thank you for your faithfulness to your board, to your church. And uh, thank you uh, for all that you're doing around here. Uh, we're going to move into the sermon time right now. We're in the book of Galatians now. We got started in Galatians last week. You opened up with Paul speaking to them that there is no other gospel to follow than the gospel of Jesus Christ. We talked about a few twists and turns that some other presentations on the gospel message have taken. And then Paul usually does this in one of his in a letter that he writes. He talks about being called by God, 
gives a little testimony time there. And so Galatians 1, 11 to 24, we hear a little bit about Paul's life here. Let's read today from Galatians 1, 11 to 24. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later I returned to Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing you is no lie. Then I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report, the man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith once tried to destroy and they praised God because of me I was reading through this scripture and uh, what should show up on uh, the news links in my browser uh, if you use Firefox like I do when you come to the home page on Firefox there's a dozen news links uh, there and uh, there was a uh, news link there on the life of Kenny Rogers uh, when I was reading uh, through the scripture right after I read it and I was getting on with my day and, and saw this news link on Kenny Rogers and this song that, that old song came to mind uh, those words from it love will turn you around and run, you can hide, never let it inside, keep living your life in the dark. Sooner or later, that gentle persuader is going to catch up with your heart, make you a dreamer, believer, believing in love. Right when a man's doing all that he planned and he thinks he's got just what he needs, life will deliver a shot that will shiver, driving him down to his knees. Make him start giving, living, living again. Couldn't help but think maybe Kenny had read a little something on the life of Paul before he wrote that. It just seems to fit right in with uh, everything about Paul's life. Uh, he's a man who was uh, destined uh, on a path to follow in the ways of his fathers in Judaism, he says here. He was uh, impressed so much by what he had learned. Uh, there being a Pharisee and learning the law, that's what he, he wanted to do. He set out on that path. Everything in life was about following that law. You know, uh, maybe you've uh, been around somebody like that. Maybe you are that person. Whatever walk of life or whatever job you do, uh, everything is about that thing. Eat it, sleep it, breathe it, 24 hours a day. Uh, it's, it's all on you, all the time. Uh, even, you know, even in something like the grocery store, I, you know, I was working in the grocery store uh, before I, I took this career on here. And, and uh, right after I moved down here in, uh, in 2000, I, I got a job for just a short bit at a Big Bear grocery store for before Big Bear went bankrupt and everything. And I was working at the, the store in Reynoldsburg there on Broad Street and that strip of plaza and there's just Chipotle at one end and I don't remember what's at 
the other end we used to have a big bear grocery store right in the middle of that plaza and all and one of the guys on the shift just everything he talked about was grocery store stuff 20, it's just the whole shift long even on break time he's talking about this and that finally I said something to him one time I was just like you know can, can we talk about something else than stocking groceries store shelves or something like that is there any sports you're interested in is there any music you like is there any you know it's, it's that way in any any way of life sometimes we get wrapped up in a thing and Paul says here he was extremely zealous for the traditions of his father to the point that he was killing people he was killing people who didn't believe like he did was taking lives and he thought that was okay thought that was just fine he says here in the opening words of this section that the gospel that he preaches is not of human origin I did not receive it from any man nor was I taught it rather I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ what he learned before in Judaism was to him by man. He was sent off at a young age. He learned under a rabbi. Everything he had learned was from human tradition. And it could stick, you know, it could stick with you. And it impressed uh, upon him very heavily. This message of Jesus Christ, there's really no other way to talk about that. He's walking down to Damascus Road. He sees a bright light in the sky. Uh, this the only way to describe this is that it's a revelation from Jesus Christ. He didn't do this. He was brought to this point of believing in Jesus Christ when God shows up in the sky and says, boom, here it is. It's one of those billboard moments. We'd love to have those billboard moments from God. You drive down the interstate, you see the sign on the side of the highway right there. Eat at Joe's, you know. Come in our store, come this way, turn off at this route. We'd love to have those messages, plain and simple. For all of us who have not seen a bright light in the sky, it's still about the revelation of Jesus Christ. God needs to reveal Christ to you in your heart. It's not something you're taught to do. Nobody hands you a list of things that you need to do. It's about believing in Christ. The message is preached. It comes to you. What we need to do is do something with that. We trust. We believe that something happens inside of us when we trust in Jesus. It changes everything. It turns your world upside down. Or in Kenny Rogers' case, it turns us around and it faces us in the right direction. <laughs> He says here of his own experience, I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate, immediate response was not to consult any human being. He didn't talk to somebody. He didn't go off and learn from some people. It says here later in this next verse that he went off to Arabia. Church tradition suggests that he went off and consulted some, some teachers in Judaism and in early Christianity for about a year. The debate is, did he go away for a year? Was he gone three years? It says here, in these verses, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus, verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. So the talk is, did he go away for a year? Did he go away for three years? What is he doing when he goes away to Arabia? He goes away to learn. He's had this revelation of Christ. You need to talk to somebody. You need to, to get your head on straight. 
before you go out, share with other people. Here is a point where we would debate with some of our Pentecostal and Apostolic brothers. You know, it's not about just giving your life to Jesus Christ and you should go out and start building a church out here on the highway the next day. We need to learn from somebody else. Uh, whether you go to a formal school of theology or seminary, or whether you just take the time to sit down and learn from other church fathers who have been at this a whole lot longer than you have, we need to learn some things about Jesus Christ. I've sat in those church services in an apostolic church on a Sunday evening when guys don't know their scripture from their rear end, and they're just rambling. And they're just talking as fast as they can and as loud as they can. And none of it's making any sense. Paul does not come back with that sort of experience. He goes off for a year. He consults some people. He talks to some people. And then he comes back a year later. And you begin to see him preaching in the churches. And it's three years of preaching in the churches before he goes up to Jerusalem. Eat everybody. He says here in verse 19, I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing to you is no lie. Paul draws from his own personal experience very well. He relates to other people in a very personal way. This is his experience and he's not afraid to share it. Other people need to hear his testimony. They need to hear about what he has done. If you're walking around through life feeling guilty, feeling downtrodden, feeling harsh about your own sinful life and your own personal experience, Paul is sharing his and he says, mine is way worse. In one of his other letters that he would write, he would say, I am the chief of all sinners. That's me. Uh, at that time, there were people, and they still do it today, who make a dollar on their own story and their own experience. Uh, how awful their life was, how uh, attractive that sinful life was, and they draw from that and they talk about it over and over and over again. Paul ends all debate. He says, I was chief of all sinners. I went around and I killed people for a living, for the faith. That's my experience. No one else can top that. End of story. After three years, he gets to go up to Jerusalem. He gets acquainted with Cephas. He stays with him 15 days. He didn't see any of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing to you is no lie. Then I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith once tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me. People are going to hear about your faith and your story. It's going to go before you. There were people over at Hopewell who heard about me before I came. They got the stories. They knew what was going to happen. So far this month they've been pretty happy with everything they've heard and seen. Your story goes before you. And people are going to hear about it. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. What do people know about us before we go back out into the world and we share and we talk and we're out there with other people? What do they know about Jesus Christ being in us? Let that go before us. The story be God's story in our hearts and in our lives. Maybe you identify with the words in this song. Maybe this, this song says a lot about your personal journey. It's amazing grace. We're going to sing the first and last verse.